if you thought Game of Thrones failed to pay off a ton of setup with their ending, you should know that Ptolemy Caesar was the most monumentally epic dropped plot ever, 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 ever. <laughs> So you've got this kid, 17 years old, and he's the last pharaoh of Egypt. Not that he knew that. And he's in charge of the oldest surviving empire in the Middle East. During the short reign of Ptolemy Caesar, commonly known as Caesarion, the kingdoms of Egypt, also called Kemet and Mizur, had dominated the region for over 3,000 years, having risen and fallen, and risen and fallen again and again, in what Egyptians believed was a natural, never-ending cycle of their civilization. So ridiculously ancient was Egypt, that even before the establishment of the Library of Alexandria, scholars from across the known world would travel there to learn about their own land's history, due to Egypt's legacy predating the Bronze Age and its eventual collapse. There's old, and then there's being in the Old Testament as that stupid ancient and powerful nation-state empire thing that is narratively believable to have swallowed up the entire population of the Hebrews, even if that never happened ever, 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 ever. So Ptolemy had some serious genes. The first Ptolemy, Ptolemy Soter, meaning savior, was possibly the half-brother of Alexander the Great himself. Since it's long been rumored that Philip of Macedon was his actual father. So 50-50 chance this kid Caesarion was related to Alexander the Great. Philip's entire family claimed to be Heraclids, that is, descendant of Heracles. And through him, the king of the gods, Zeus himself. To legitimize his, uh, pharaohship, Soter married Artakama, the granddaughter of the Achaemenid king who had previously ruled over Egypt before Alexander smashed it to bits. Other famous Achaemenids include this guy. Their ancestor, Cyrus the Great, is best known in Old Testament biblical circles as the Messiah. So already, Caesarion has a pretty decent claim to divine heritage by ancient world standards. Well, what beats being the distant descendant of kings, heroes, and gods? How about their only true-born son? His father, Gaius Julius Caesar, as in Caesar, was raised to godhood by Augustus Caesar and the Roman Senate just two years after he had been assassinated. Cleopatra and the wee baby Ptolemy were both living in Rome at the time that Big Julie was killed, and quickly scampered back to Alexandria to avoid their own likely impending brutal stabbings. Caesarion was just three years old when his father became a literal god, and so grew up not only as a god-king himself, co-ruling the kingdom with his mother as was very creepy Ptolemaic tradition, but also the son of a foreign god-conqueror who ruled the empire his own kingdom was subservient to. Caesar's own family, the Julii, claimed to be descendants of Aeneas, the mythical forefather of Romulus and Remus, and thus the city of Rome itself. Aeneas was said to be the leader of a group of Trojan refugees who escaped Agamemnon's Achaean forces, wandered the Mediterranean until they set up Rome's backstory in a series of fanservice nods, and decide they must be in Italy, because how else do you explain finding somewhere to get a pizza at the end of the Age of Heroes? Aeneas himself was supposed to be a cousin of Prince Hector in Paris. Over a thousand years after Caesarion, the epic poet Snorri Sturluson would identify Aeneas as Vidar, son of Odin and slayer of Fenrir, the giant wolf Hulk fought on Asgard. On Aeneas's mom's side is Aphrodite, as in the goddess of love, who was descended from Uranus's sliced off balls. So all of this is allegedly going on in Lil Muad'Dib's genetic history, a perfect storm of the rightful heir to, well, uh, pretty much everything and everywhere in the Western world. And how did fate and destiny play out for this prince who was promised? 
He died. I mean, like, obviously that was 2,000 years ago and they're all dead, but... So abruptly did Caesarion's reign end, and with him the ancient Egyptian empire. It's not even really known for sure how he died. It was assumed at the time that Augustus simply had him quietly strangled, as was apt to happen to political prisoners in Rome. But no record survived of his execution, if there was any at all. Caesarion's biological, um, cousin, I think, and adopted son of Julius Caesar, Augustus, formally annexed Egypt into the Roman Empire, which he ruled as first citizen and imperator, and dissolved the office of the pharaoh, a seat that possibly went back as far as the unification of the lower and upper kingdoms of Egypt itself. During the birth of the first dynasty, at least 500 years before the first pyramid was built, Augustus's own dynasty, the Julio-Claudians, ruled Rome for nearly 100 years, mostly in debauchery and depravity, until Nero's suicide in 68 CE. The supreme political position of Caesar wouldn't truly die in one form or another until November 9th and 11th of 1918 with the abdications of the German and Austrian Kaisers, 1,942 years after the last pharaoh and the heir to the ancient world vanished into obscurity.